Hey everyone, it's me, Goku. Don't forget to subscribe to Unreal and Gaming. Here, you'll find the latest Dragon Ball news and content. Also, don't forget to like the video and follow Unreal on both Instagram and Twitter. Kakarot! You Kakarot, you will be the first to turn on notifications. Then give this video a like right now, or else I'll destroy you! <laughs> With a new god of destruction born within Universe 14, as the venerable heir had now taken up the mantle, in becoming Universe 14's lead opposition against our heroes, as the new god of destruction now takes aim, in going against our heroes by targeting each and every specific universe that is going to be directly opposing the Grand Priestess, as with Amaron now looking to become one of the biggest threats to our heroes, the million dollar question now moving forward is how far will Amaron go as being the next destroyer? to go as far as to influence other universes by joining him and will our heroes just so happen to come across him and if they do how will they fare up against the newly born god of destruction of universe 14 now before we dive any further into this video if you are new to the channel and of course have a love and passion for all things dragon ball related including its manga anime video games fan animations fan mangas and more in which would also like to be kept up to date with everything in regards to the dragon ball super manga the dragon ball super anime dragon ball video games and any and all additional content within the Dragon Ball universe, then I do encourage you guys to head on over and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon to always be notified whenever a brand new video is posted onto the channel, as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below if you guys are simply excited to see what the future holds for the Dragon Ball franchise. And with all that being said, I want to thank you all so much for your time. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. And now let's dive straight into the video. As our story continues through the cracks of time, as the venerable heir Dula and Salaga are now shown having to make their way through space, in now following the events of the venerable heir Amaron having to become the new god of destruction of the voided universe he is a part of, it was only upon having to be shown traveling through different universes where Salaga went on to respond, Here it is, the mythical cube with Dula chiming in, Incredible! I had never contemplated this kind of divine vehicle. Let's not waste any more time the venerable air chimes in we have work to do as they were only from there shown traveling it would only now appear as though even doula himself could not believe as to how fast the cube was as doula went on to respond oh the speed of this vehicle is outrageous by the way what is the fuel for this vehicle magic or the life energy of its passengers venerable air what is our travel plan salaga asks i decided to visit the grand priest directly in his palace he his palace, Salaga asks. You know where it is? Oh, this is information that only angels should know, Dula chimes in. Each element of the multiverse has a precise place and function, the venerable heir says. Nothing has ever been left to chance, with Dula responding, I'm not sure I understand everything the venerable heir is. We cannot move from one universe to another in the order that we want, he says. For each initiary, there are steps to be respected, he adds. A few years ago, there were only 12 universes, the venerable heir says. The gods have invoked during the last millennia the term of twin universes, but it is only a correlation following our disappearance, with Salaga asking, uh, you mean that at the time when our 18 universes coexisted, we were informed in groups of three in so-called triplet universes, he says. Our universe 14, for example, shared the same galaxy 
species, the same planets, and the same species as Universe 5 and Universe 8. This one is thus again connected to the universes of the Gods of Destruction, Arak and Likior, he adds. So, the place that I was born in, Dula says, exists identically in two other universes? You and Salaga are the exception to the rule, the Venerable Heir says. You have appeared in the Demon Realm, he says. There is a different one in each universe. To be clear, Universes Supreme and 12 Ultimate are now back along with the 18 Prodigies, he says. Universe 2 Benevolent and Universe 11 Justice go with the 17th Desire. And Universes 3 Witty and Universes 10 Macho come with Universe 16's Impish. Then, Universe 4 Malicious and Universe 9 Sly were linked to the 15th Cursed. And as for Universe 14 Ambitious, we are linked to the 5th Universe Balanced and the 8th Universe Worker. And finally, Universe 6's Challenger and Universe 7's Warrior Beerus and Champas are linked to Blanken's Universe, Universe 13's Champion. The universes are organized in circuits in which each series of three follows one another, the Venerable Heir says. There is no way to get from one to the other universes unless they are connected with the circuits. Ugh, that's incredible, Dula says. Getting back to our adventure, the Venerable Heir says, we are currently in between Universes 8 and Universes 6. Zeres told me that at the end of his message, that the Grand Minister's palace is in an isolated place, accessible only by the passing through special portals in a defined order. This one changes every 100 years, and Zeres shared with me the current configuration that one must follow in order to get to the palace. The first portal to pass in is in Universe 4, he says. The journey will be rather long, even on the border of the cube, but to get there, we must cross five universes in total. Though once arrived, he says, the portals will be significant shortcuts, with Salago responding, so let's optimize our trip by taking advantage of the stops to warn about the presence of the new gods of destruction of Universe 4. Yeah, let's show them that our universe is not easy to take over, Dula says. As we only then finally see how the venerable heir Dula and Salaga had now finally arrived in Universe 4, we just so happen to from that point see how the citizens of an unknown planet have now began to witness the unexpected arrival of said individuals, as Dula from that point on went on to project himself through a hologram and having to inform the citizens, Ladies and gentlemen, kneel now for we have finally come. I present to you the one and the only, the great, the almighty, the powerful, venerable heir. As spectacularly enough through the lightning, we finally see how the venerable heir had now made his presence known, in such a way in which the moment Emron had then gone as far as to finally reveal himself, it was only from that point on, where Dula had continued to inform the citizens of this unexpectedly new arrival, with Dula having to tell everyone, Sir Emron's the one true heir of the divine throne. I said kneel. As by simply having to snap his fingers, Dula had now forced all of the citizens in kneeling before the venerable heir, as Salago went on to chime in, they're probably a species without any form of a spoken language. No, Amaron says. Yes, what are your demands? The citizens go on to ask. What do you want to claim from an intelligent people like us? We are from Universe 14, Dula says, and in front of you is its new leader. What? Two years ago at the Tournament of Power, they explained to us that there were only 12 universes, and you're now saying that you are from the 14th? Does this have anything to do with the Grand Minister's call from months ago? Because otherwise, whoever you are, the Universe 14 warriors say, you're not welcomed here in our domain. So, they are aware of what's coming, Dula says. Aw, and here I was aching to toy with them. They looked so fun to play with, those little chicken legs of theirs. You haven't done anything that would be an offense to us yet, Salaga adds, but we feel generous today. Allow us to forgive give you by kneeling before us right now. <laughs> Sadly for you, the Universe 4 warriors respond, I am actually the most stubborn being in this universe. So there is no way of reasoning with you, Amaron responds, as we only from there now see how each of the Universe 4's mightiest warriors now began to power up, it was
was only from there where Dula began to smile in responding. <laughs> It's just like attacking a bird's band whose mother is coming to protect. Sir, <sighs> there is no way a god of destruction could lower himself to such a pitiful level, Salaga says. Okay. God of Destruction? Holy, uh, his level of divine key is probably way beyond our comprehension. Aw, oh, dear Air Doula says, give us two minutes, just the time needed to teach them the errors of their ways to never do this again. As we only from that point then see how both Doula and Salaga had stepped out of the cube with the venerable Air having to watch them, Universe 4's mightiest warriors instead actually stand their ground as they're about to engage against both Doula and Salaga as all the while, we only from that point venture on over to Catella's planet and seeing as to how Catella was training with his angel until, all of a sudden, Catella had gone as far as to stop by responding this key. I don't know him, with his angel having to chime in, however, it is an energy that could be of a god of destruction. And considering the darkness it gives off, it could be bowed as well, with Catella responding, if I don't recognize the key of a god of destruction, it's perhaps it comes from a resurrected universe. Tch, I wasn't even even a god of destruction when these were destroyed, and if I'm not mistaken, is that the two years that this good old Grand Priest left us have been listened to, with the angel responding no. I don't recognize this energy either. Oh, well it is nevertheless lower than yours, but the situation itself remains worrying. What would you like to do, he asks. Kick kick kick! What do you think? We are talking about my universe, and I forbid anyone to intervene in it. I either with or without my authorization. Let's get on the road, Catella responds. All right, the angel chimes in, as we only both see how Catella and his angel were now making their way towards the venerable heir. Within that moment in time, as we then go back to all of the Universe 4 warriors who were shown standing up against Dula, the venerable heir, and Salaga, there were bodies scattered all throughout the landscape, with only one warrior now having to be shown remaining, with both Salaga and Dula having to sit on down as the city behind them begins to burn, in a very terrifying like fashion, we only from there see how the venerable heir was now sitting on top of a pile of bodies, in showcasing the fruits of his absolute power, as the venerable heir went on to respond, we didn't come here to destroy you, only to tell you that the end of everything will soon begin. It's not too late for you to make the right choice, he adds, don't get into the wrong team. You could not do anything against Salaga and Dula, them using just a tiny any piece of their power, so do you really think it is wise to oppose me? Furthermore, I myself am nothing close to Sir Dromel. <laughs> Dromel? Who the hell is that? I won't bother explaining that to you, so think wisely. You hold your people's lives, and who you know is what may give you a chance if you joined us, he says. <laughs> Keep acting full of yourselves all you'd like. You have no idea of who we are and what we're capable of. But then, it was only upon Dula having to raise simply one finger that had ultimately resulted in this individual having to age in such a way that he was only from there also now beginning to fall on down to the ground as he was beginning to get choked out until that was when the venerable heir had sensed Catella's presence as the venerable heir went on to respond, Catella, let's go, with all three having to now take their leave. Before having to have his life be ripped away from him, Ganos had gone as far as to open his eyes as he overheard Catella tell him, Wake up, Ganos. Ugh. I have not anything left, he says. You're talking too quickly, even though it's true that we've arrived slightly too late. What happened? Oh, may you forgive us for being late, the angel responds. Uh, Chapel, a uh, hop! Oh, they seem to be in advance. Do you think we can get there before them, Catella asks. Oh, it won't be easy, Catella's angel responds, knowing that they're in a cube, but seeing as to where they're going, I think they are aiming for a specific portal. Oh, then let's hurry and call our cube, he says. And to think that we were hoping for mortals to help us in this work, Catella says. Most of you won't even be on point, right, the angel responds, and for those who have the strength required, we'll need them to mentally break after such encounters, he says. Cognac, Catella says, clean up this planet a bit so that it looks a bit more like something and just make a few remaining inhabitants forget everything that happened here. Let's not cause panic unnecessarily, and we'll be taking those three with us, he says. 
Mortals. Oh, it's not like of you to act in such interest of the mortals, Sir Catella, Cognac responds. Heh. <laughs> well, very well, he says, if that is your desire. Which again, interestingly enough, with Catella being shown having to show interest in wanting these mortals to actually fight for him, he was for once doing something for the benefit of the mortals as Catella was now looking to hunt down the venerable heir, as all the while with the venerable heir now being shown having to exit from universe 4 and now having to enter universe 10, it was very clear by now upon having to arrive on a planet called Planet Aragon, where the venerable heir Dula and Salaga had now made their presence known there, it was only from that point where the venerable heir went on to chime in, wonderful, as the narration adds, 5 months have passed since the events between Kanchi and Kaishi, the 12 universes have trained and are still training hard in order to defend the legacy of the previous generations in the best possible way. In which to where when going back to universe 11, in seeing Gohan through the smoke as Gohan was overseeing a burning city below him, the pride troopers were only from their show making their way towards Gohan's location as Dispo went on to chime in, it's amazing. Since the high priests call a majority of the evil individuals have sprung into action and are trying to enforce their laws. They know that a war is coming and are taking advantage of the tension to gain wealth or authority. Indeed, as you say, Casserole responds, and they are more and more numerous. And it is up to us, the Pry Troopers, to stop these kinds of individuals before the two years is up. In this way, we drastically lower the future alliance of the High Priestess, with Jiren responding, How long has Gohan been on the Grill Planet exactly? Well, he's been there for about three days now, and it's only a few hours ago that he gave a sign of life by asking us to join him. Well, he absolutely wanted you to come, Jiren. It was unconscious to let him go there, Jiren responds. I know, Dispo says, but we had no choice. All of the members of the Pride Troopers are mobilized throughout the universe to stop the wars or terrorist organizations. So Gohan offered to go solo. In which all the while, as Jiren and Casserole have finally arrived in looking up and noticing Gohan hover up in the air, with Gohan shown wearing his Pride Trooper outfit underneath his old traditional gi, it was only from there where Dispo went on to chime in, <laughs> look at him. In just five months, he looks unrecognizable. Did you seriously think it would come to this when he came to meet us? The only reason why I agreed to give him a test was to pay off our debt to Universe 7, and today, I am happy that he is one of my brothers, Jiren says. The planet grill is now cleaned up, Gohan responds, as you've asked me to do, General Casserole. Indeed, Casserole responds. I didn't think that you would stop an army in only three days, but you know as well as I do that it wasn't useful to let them all live, right? It was a wanted organization for several months now. Its members are each responsible for many deaths and accidents. This kind of guest does not deserve to be spared. I understand your point of view, Gohan responds, and I'm sorry I didn't accomplish my mission as you would have liked, but if the Earth had taught me anything, it's that our enemies of today can change and become our greatest allies in time. Tuh, be careful not to get too lost in your gummy bear world of yours, friend. But thank you. As Jiren went on to ask, Gohan, why have you summoned me? With Gohan responding, I have been with you for five months now and my goal is gradually taking shape thanks to you in particular, he says. As we only from there see a flashback of the Gohan when he originally had joined the Pride Troopers and being offered a chance in growing with them, this was exactly Gohan's goal from the very beginning is to get stronger as a means of working alongside with the Pride Troopers, as it was during the middle of his flashback where a resurrected Belmont went on to respond, what is so interesting about K? See you, my potential was awakened by the old Kaioshin of our universe many years ago, Gohan says, so I somehow get my power today indirectly from the Kaioshin, and when I came out with Dispo from the fighting surface, I later asked Shin who K really was because, well, I didn't really know about them as if the Kaioshin were connected to me since I was in their world. So, I feel their energies and their potential as Margarita went on to chime in. The world of the Kaioshin is not a place like any other, she adds, and a few mortals have ever set foot in it. You officially wore the Kaioshin outfit and the Potaras that Kabito had made you into a Kaioshin apprentice at the time. This should give you some of the answers on many points, she says. From exactly what information did your Kaioshin tell you about K? Jiren asks, as Gohan went on to respond, well, he explained to me that the Kaioshins first appear as golden fruits, but that on the whole of the golden fruits which existed, K was a fruit two to three times bigger than the others, he says, which also explains
explains why K has such an intense key compared to his fellow fruits. In any case, K is nothing like the other creator gods that you and I know, am I wrong? Oh, he knows what he's talking about, Belmont says. What does he have in mind? Indeed, he possesses powers that his colleagues will never possess in their lifetime, Belmont says. What do you think, with Gohan responding and for some reason that this abstract to me only feels like when I awaken my potential and I feel a discomfort in my belly as though something is partially unlocked. And of course, basically referencing that there's more to Gohan's power than meets the eye, as it was only from there where Margarita went on to chime in anyway, it must be the logical consequence of trusting a perverse Kaioshin who, more so over, has assimilated an unreliable witch. And from what I can see in you, she adds, your potential is far from being half awoken. Moreover, you seem to have a link with several people, she says. A Saiyan father, an Earth mother, a potential released by a Namek, and a second time by a god of creation. The conditions are met for your total awakening to be a success, which in hindsight basically means that there is much more to Gohan's power than meets the eye right now, as this entire time Gohan had only been using a partially unlocked portion of his true power, as it was only towards the end where Gohan went on to acknowledge Jiren by asking Jiren, I wanted to ask you a service. Since my childhood, there was not a single enemy ever faced and fought by my father the way you did at the Tournament of Power. Even during your fights, assisted by Frieza and Android 17, you kept being better in all of the aspects mentioned, which there is no doubt that you are extraordinary. As with Jiren having to oversee this and basically now understanding that Gohan is calling Jiren out to a fight, it was only from that point where Jiren went on to respond in addition to his innate abilities and ease for fights, in addition in addition to his innate abilities and ease for fights, I feel from him, this look and this aura are amazing. With Gohan responding, fight me with all of your power. Waiting for K coming, I will knock at my limits starting now. So different than his father's, as it was only right then and there where Dragon Ball Kakumi manga chapter number 12 then finally comes to a close. Now, one of my biggest criticisms for this manga chapter was the innate dialogue that went alongside with this chapter, as I felt like what really lacked in this chapter chapter was the dialogue in having everything be translated the proper way even though the team was essentially rushed in having to do so. The biggest takeaway of this manga chapter for me was the way the dialogue was portrayed. However, I absolutely loved how Gohan now actually grew into his own and even now going as far as to challenge Jiren to a fight in understanding the fact that Jiren was one of the only ones to have pushed Goku along with everyone else the way he did during the Tournament of Power in such a way that Gohan kind of feels as though now, Jiren is the best suitable candidate in helping Gohan now do the same as Goku did during the tournament. So what better training partner for Gohan to have than one of the strongest warriors, if not the most powerful warrior within the multiverse right now, having to further aid and embed him in unlocking more of his true inner power. So again, I want to go ahead and get your thoughts down in the comment section below in regards to the venerable heir and the way he just so happens to maliciously move through universes in wanting to recruit as many people as he possibly possibly can in getting them to join his side versus being the opposition. So again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so very much for your time. That's where if of course you guys enjoyed, then be sure to head on down below and give this video a big fat thumbs up by smashing that like button. Also, if you just so happen to be new to the channel and of course love Dragon Ball and anime, then I do encourage you guys to go on over and smash that subscribe button and turn on all notifications by clicking on the bell icon. That way you guys never miss a single video that is posted onto the channel. Tune back in for more and I'll be seeing each and every single one of you down in the comment section below and in the next video. Take it easy everybody and have a great day. Peace! Hello! Did you know that you can stay up to date with the latest Dragon Ball content by simply subscribing to Unrelent Gaming? Also, don't forget to follow on these social media platforms, you sexy son of a bitch. Roshi! Silent Cell, me and the fans are having a moment. That's right. I know what you want. Extra long, thick Dragon Ball content. Quality reviews with flawless editing. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You dirty bitch. Roshi, the fuck? God damn it, I need them to subscribe, Cell. And we're demonetized. Yeah, screw it. Let's cut to the video. <laughs>